with uh, your client, okay? Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Garland coming to you from Chicago. As usual, it's Sunday. We've gone to the Detroit Detention Center. That, that usually makes for some interesting appearances. Let's see if something happens here. Well, hello, everybody. My comments just populated. Good morning. Look at y'all. Andrea's up and rolling out, out there in Iowa. We got Sally in the house. Yarny, you wanna you wanna start doing uh, the other names? Uh, yeah, we can go with the rest of the list while they do those interviews. Yeah, seriously. Okay, you know number one's not here, right? The part hand. Call yeah, call a case. Happened. I got a stream going here. Yep. <laughs> I was waiting till they started. Apparently, I jumped in a, a minute minute too soon. Detroit is juicy. Detroit is, <laughs> if nothing else, Detroit is juicy. All right. Now I've been been busted on live stream using my microwave. I don't know how I'll recover. <laughs> Hey, Donna. All right, here we go. All right. And um, do we have his toady? We might as well do them together. Uh, um, just saying. Okay. Just say. Yep. All right, gentlemen, what are your names, please, one at a time? DeMarco, Naeem, Brandon. Sir? D'Angelo, Cortez, Sanford. Thank you. This is case number 23055813, State of Michigan versus DeMarco, Naeem, Brandon, and D'Angelo, Sanford, counsel. Rita White on behalf of Mr. DeMarco Brandon and D'Angelo Sanford for Raymond Purpose, a way for getting Santa Michigan. Thank you. One second, counsel. Uh, Mr. Alcudari, are you done with your client? Yes, Your Honor. All right. He needs Mr. He needs, he needs Mr. Czar, right? Yeah, he's Mr. Czar. And then I'll put uh, the, uh, no, he's Mr. Jabari. And oh, jobbery, then, yep. Jobbery. And then if you can put Mr. Zara on camera, too, I'll uh, put him in with his attorney. Sir Mooney, you there? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. And there's your breakout room. All right. Sorry, Ms. White. Back to Mr. Brandon and Mr. Sanford. Uh, do you waive, waive formal reading? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Court will enter not guilty plea as to both defendants as to bond proof. 
First, with regards to Mr. Brandon, he is 26 years old. He represents that he has no prior Did that help? criminal history or conviction history. Um, he is currently seeking employment. Uh, he lives with his brother, who is Mr. Stan, um, Stanford, and he is aware that there will be a no contact order put in place, which will by, abide by at all costs. And with that, Your Honor, given the fact that he has no prior criminal um, felony conviction history, and he is currently seeking employment, we are requesting a personal bond from Mr. Brandon. Okay, uh, and that's Mr. Brandon, and you said he's not employed currently? Nope, he's in the process of seeking, he's in seeking employment. Okay, so does that mean he has a job or he's looking? He does not at this moment. Okay. And, all right. How about that, does that help? Obviously, um, this is a very concerning case. I mean, the three of them, allegedly go to uh, the neighbor's house across the street, force their way in, you know, they're, they're asked to leave several times, say, I'll leave when I get ready to leave, make me leave, this sort of thing. They're in the, apparently the upstairs of the home, two of them are, Mr. Brandon apparently stayed, quote, downstairs. Would you like me to argue bond on behalf of Mr. Stanford if you're going to kind of make a determination? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. So with Go ahead. regard to Mr. Stanford, he's 32 years old and he is the brother of Mr. Brandon. Um, he does not have any adult criminal conviction history. Uh, Your Honor, he currently works an odd job, no KPS history. Not liberty and, um, to say. They both live together and he again himself is aware of the no contact order. He's aware, they're aware of the nature of this charge and it's serious. So they're going to comply with their bond. And we are, I'm also requesting a personal bond on behalf of Mr. Stanford also. I'm sorry, as to Mr. Um, Stanford, what was his work situation? I, he currently is working. I'm going to turn it up as much as I can. Okay. So, you know, this kind of thing that is very disturbing. All right. I guess you're going to have to close this one down. This home while the couple uh, I don't want to do a stream where, where nobody can hear. Uh, and then uh, allegedly uh, refused to leave and we got... At least at one point, um, some of that couple's property, which was covered by one of the responding officers, had to be a very terrifying situation, to say the least. Or maybe it'll just so be me and Amy. The case is pending, you're going to have no contact with Mr. Hoff or Ms. Sands or with their address on Wisconsin. Is that clear to both of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You'll both be on GPS tether on house arrest. If you leave your house, you're going back to jail. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Courts have bond in this matter at for each of you one hundred thousand dollars cash or surety. At I assume counsel is going to give rise to a bond redetermination here. So that's why. Okay, so there'll be a bond redetermination hearing Tuesday morning, uh, March the 7th, in front of Judge McConico. Other dates will be uh, probable cause conference, March 13th, preliminary exam, March 20th, both in front of Judge Aliyah Sabri. All of that happens in 36th District Court. Thank you, gentlemen. You can step aside. So when do we, so when do we get our, when do we get out? We get when our do we get out for each other? When you, when you post $100,000, sir. And we post $100,000? Thank you, Pink Candy. And you're going to have that bond redetermined on March 7th. You're going to have to wait for it to hopefully go down. Be able to go down. So we got so to sit in here till March 7th? Yes, unless sure. you're able yeah. to find a bail bond to the post. It's looking that way. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> is there a percentage on that 100000 
the hundred thousand campus Guys, we're serious. That means just straight a hundred thousand. Thank you. Wait forty eight hours if you can get it lowered on the seven. I turn myself down and put the mic away. Hopefully that helps. Michigan versus Ali Azhar Al Jabari Council. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Attorney Abbasir Al Qadari appearing on the behalf of Mr. Ali Al Jabari. And do you wait for me, reading? Your Honor, can you kindly um, uh, uh, just mention the uh, charges? Sure. So no. Two counts. Count one is assault with a dangerous weapon, uh, a handgun. Uh, felony maximum penalty four years and or two thousand dollars. Count two is uh, felony firearm mandatory two years if convicted on the primary charge. Anything else you need, counsel? Thank you, Honor. We have the former reading of the mute. Thank you. Court will enter not guilty plea on your client's behalf. Ask the bond, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, I would like to uh, bring to your attention um, some very important information regarding Mr. Ali Al Jabri. Mr. Ali Al Jabri is 21 years old. Um, Your Honor, as soon as he was detained, um, his father contacted me and they retained um, uh, my office so that we can represent him during the proceedings uh, related to these uh, allegations. Um, and, and now the charges, obviously. Um, I did visit him. Um, at the Detroit Detention Center on Friday. Um, Your Honor, uh, he's currently working full-time um, at a pharmacy. Um, he lives with his uh, mother, father, and his uh, brothers. Um, he actually takes care of uh, his family. Um, he, he supports them financially. Um, you know, he's, he's been living um, in Dearborn at, at his current residence uh, for over 15 years. Um, he has very strong community ties. Uh, Your Honor, he has uh, a minimal criminal history, does not have any felonies on his record. Um, I would also like to mention that he is currently enrolled in the Detroit Police Academy. Um, he is a CPL holder, uh, Your Honor. Um, and also, um, uh, one thing that, uh, um, to, to my knowledge, was established is that when he was detained, um, he was not in a possession of a uh, firearm. Uh, Your Honor, at this point, although understandably these are felony charges, given the fact that he does not have a felony record and that he's employed full time and um, has strong community ties, I would request from the court kindly to consider a personal bond or in the alternative, a low tax bond um, so that he can- Happy birthday, Matt Buell. And so that I can meet with Thank him you. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning and we can proceed um, in preparation for the next court hearing. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Counsel. Um, you know, the allegations here is that he pointed a gun at someone on the freeway in, uh, I guess, what he called road rage incident. He, of course, denied that. And the other person, uh, off-duty Detroit police officer, says that's exactly what happened. Uh, I'm sure you've advised him that while this case is pending, his CPL is suspended. Road rage with an off-duty cop. Bad move. Bad move. What would you suggest uh, a reasonable bond is, counsel? Road rage with an off-duty Detroit cop. Oh. <laughs> so, so, Your Honor, um, of course, I think you are um, best suited to make that determination. I, I think in this case, Your Honor, um, 
a, a personal bond um, would be appropriate or in the alternative, a low cash bond so that his father can post it today, maybe, you know, $500 or $1,000? That, that might be a contender so for this stream. Or not to possess a firearm or any other thumbnail competition. Is that clear? Your Honor, it's clear. All right. Gun or no gun, at least he didn't shoot anybody. So, uh, for the really reason, can't. Um, so court will set bond at. Oh, wait. I missed one. 50,000, 50,000 personal. Now, is that better? Next court date will be March 13, probable cause conference, March 20th, preliminary exam, both in front of Judge Elias Sabri in 36th District Court. Anything else for this record? Sorry, Your Honor, when is the next court date? Uh, the 13th for probable cause and the 20th for exam. Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Take care. Thank you, sir. You can step aside. All right, that's usually all the way. I assumed it was. But we have a winner. Right off the bat, we've got a road rage or a guy pulls a gun on an off duty cop. Dumb ways to die. So many dumb ways to die. Good afternoon, what's your name, please? Good afternoon, Your Honor, Mr. Azar. Thank you. This is case 2305814, State of Michigan versus Hussein Hassan Zar, counsel. May it please the court. My name is Abdullah Mugni, P number 85374, here on behalf of Hussein Zar. Thank you. Do you waive formal reading? Uh, yes, Your Honor. My client stands mute. Thank you. Court will enter not guilty plea on your client's behalf. Ask uh, the that, might be. that might be. So, Your Honor. <laughs> is a family friend of mine. His mother is very good friends with my aunt. They are well-known, prestigious, and loved in our community. Um, this kid is 28 years old. He's never committed a crime in the past. He's never been convicted of any issues uh, in, in his past. And oh, this look, kid is he's holding. a college-educated kid. He comes from a, a, a well-known family. He has strong community ties. Volunteers. Uh, in his, uh, whenever he gets a chance, he volunteers at a hospital and he donates foods and meals to those in need. Um, he got caught up in a bad situation with some bad friends. And this is not him. Uh, he, somewhere down the line, this man was with uh, the wrong crowd and started using. And because of that- He's a victim. He made some wrong decisions. Hussein eventually, and as you saw in the last few days, he's been hospitalized due to withdrawals that he's been suffering from. And after speaking with his family and him, the moment he gets out, he's getting checked into a rehab facility to better himself. This guy wants to do the right thing. This isn't the issue. This isn't an issue about a criminal who went ahead and committed a bad thing. This is an issue about a good kid, a contributing member of society who has community ties, who made a mistake and needs help. And that's exactly what we're going to get him, Your Honor. So I plead with you and I beg with you that as soon that you, you find mercy in your heart, you give this man a personal bond. And as soon as he gets out, I promise you, you have my word and his word that he will check himself into rehab and get better. Throughout this case, you're going doing to a nice job. Th this yeah. face of him being in prison is not who he is. He is a good man. And I promise you, by the end of this entire case, once it's resolved, you will be impressed with him. 
Thank you, counsel. Is he working? He is. He works at a car dealership called Keith Auto Sales. And what's his ability to post? So currently, he does not have money. He said his, his mother can help out. Um, but I think it is best to do that he get a personal bond, Your Honor. Thank you, counsel. Um, your input is helpful. I am concerned with the assaultive nature of these allegations, specifically that yeah, it's, solid. Um, really does. it's alleged that your client pushed the complainant uh, into a wall, causing her to fall, and at which time he was able to grab her iPhone. Uh, I guess they were already struggling over her purse when that happened. So he, he, to my knowledge, he doesn't know who this woman is. It was that's, that's his only like way said, out right now. Help. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Keeping him locked up isn't going to do much from him. We want to get him back on the streets. He's a he's a contributing member of society and has no plans of using again. He has no plans of contacting this woman or committing any crimes in general. I will return the phone to News. All right, sir, while this case is pending, you are not to uh, use uh, either alcohol or any drugs while this case is pending. Is that clear to you? Yes. And you have no contact with the complaining witness in this matter. Council, I understand your concerns, but you know, I'm looking at a, a very uh, assaultive set of allegations. Um, does he have any ability to post? And what was his work situation again? I forgot. So he worked. He worked for a car dealership. Uh, Keith Auto Sales. I asked him if he had any money uh, that he could pay this bond towards. He said no, he does not. Um, he said his mother can help out. Um, I know I can vouch for his mother. He will come forward and pay if need be, um, but I I don't know how much he can pay. Okay. Also, if you know, what's the proximity between his address on Horger and this area on 15th Street? Um, where the DDC? No, um, I got an address for your client on Horger, H O R G E R. Yeah, I've got an event yeah. address yeah. on 15th Street. It's not going to happen. Are, are they in close proximity? It's funny. If you know. um, <laughs> is that in Detroit? So, so I just want to look it up so I can be certain with you. Um, it's roughly about. 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes by car and he doesn't have a vehicle and uh, neither does his father. Okay. Sportsman said, Bond, I have $25,000 personal 
Next court date is March 13, probable cause conference, March 20th, preliminary exams. And those are both in front of Judge Giles at 36th District Court. Anything else for the record, counsel? Oh, thank you so much, John. Nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted Lenise. Yeah. Thank you. I wanted Thanks, Lenise for this guy. <laughs> Standing right on that line, sir. Yep. State your full name right now. Yep. Raphael Williams. Yeah. Good to know. Thank you. This is case 23055815, State of Michigan versus Raphael Jermaine Williams, Sr. Counsel. Rita White, on behalf of Mr. Raphael Jermaine Williams, Jr., for arraignment purposes, he will waive formal reading. Stand mute. Thank you, Counsel. Court will not not guilty plea uh, on your client's behalf. And that's the bond. Mr. Williams is 42 years old. He is currently, he currently owns a catering company. Uh, your Honor, that he is currently resides with his family members, morning. including his children that are primarily minors but for a 19-year-old um, child. Uh, your Honor, he does not have any prior assaultive, felony, or misdemeanor conviction. So with that, given the fact that this, these charges in and of themselves are not assaultive, we're requesting a personal bond. Thank you, Mr. Williams. While this case is pending, you are not to possess a gun. Is that clear, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, court does note that uh, upon execution of the search warrant, apparently Mr. Williams was uh, very forthcoming with the fact that he did have a gun and even showed the officers where the gun is. Uh, so court's going to set bond at $5,000 personal. Next court day is a probable cause conference on March 13, preliminary exam, March 20th, uh, both in front of Judge Jefferson, 36th District Court. Thank you, sir. You can step aside. All right, thank you. How fast I can get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My full name is Ryan Keith Lewis. Thank you, sir. This is case 2305-816, State of Michigan versus Ryan Keith Lewis, counsel. Rita White on behalf of Mr. Ryan Keith Lewis. For arraignment purposes, Mr. Lewis will waive formal reading. Stand you. Thank you. Corporal Leonard, not guilty. Plea on your client's behalf as to bond, please. Mr. Lewis is 54 years old. Uh, your Honor, he is currently self-employed as a mover. He's been employed in that, in that capacity for in excess of 15 years. He currently lives alone. He has adult children. Um, he is indigent and cannot afford any monetary bond. Uh, your Honor, he currently does um, did have a surgery involving his hip being replaced. Uh, your Honor, given the fact that um, he does have prior criminal convictions, but they date all the way back to over 20 plus years, um, we're asking that you take that into account, given the fact that his um, not his prior convictions also are not assaulted. So with that, Your Honor, he is aware that he will be ordered to have no contact with the complainant, which he will abide by. And um, Your Honor, we are asking you to allow him to be released on a personal bond. What's his work situation? He said he's self-employed. Um, yes, he's self-employed, so he takes jobs where he can get them as a mover. And I'm also a veteran with honorable discharge. So I do a lot of work with the VA. Yeah. From the Army. Thank you, sir. 
You're welcome, Your Honor. So, um, you know, I've got a lot of concerns here, Council. Uh, we've got him asking uh, the complainant, who my paperwork indicates is his wife, uh, for money for crack. And then he punches her in the left eye. And then at some point, he strikes her in the head with a knife. None of that sounds good. Do they live together? I do. No, they do, but he's not gonna. He's gonna live. He he listed that he lives alone. I do live alone. She. And apparently she's pregnant, George. That's very generous. That is not confirmed. While this case is pending, sir, you will not possess a gun, a knife, or any other dangerous weapon. You have no contact whatsoever with Miss Earl or Early, however that's pronounced. Uh, that means don't call her, don't text her, don't go to her house, don't uh, reach out to her on social media, don't have anyone contact her on your behalf. Is all that clear to you? I understand, Your Honor. I clearly do. And additionally, you're to have no, uh, not use any drugs while this case is pending. Is that clear? That is clear, Your Honor. Agreed. Uh, <laughs> Court must have bound this matter out of a significant concern for the complaining witness at. 50,000, five zero thousand, ten percent And I presume, Council, that's going to give us a redetermination here? Yes. All right, that will be Tuesday morning, 9 o'clock, in front of Judge McConico. Next court dates after that are March 13th for probable cause conference and the March 20th for preliminary exam, both in front of Judge King. All of that takes place in 36th District Court. Thank you, sir. You can step aside. Yeah, it's well deserved. Right on that line, you won't state your full name. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name, please? Tony Dickerson. Thank you. This is case 2206132, State of Michigan versus Johnny Dickerson, the third counsel. Rita White on behalf of Mr. Johnny Dickerson. He will waive formal reading. Stand you. Thank you. Uh, court will enter not guilty plea on your client's behalf. I do note there is a capius in the file signed January of this year by Judge Aaliyah Sabri. It's a little bit confusing in that it says uh, bond or bail is set at. It's perfect. It's written personal and then a, a thousand cash. Uh, not, uh, Court, uh, Madam Clerk is telling me that it's personal in the system. As to bond, please. Your Honor, we're asking that the bond remain $1,000 personal. As he was picked up, he has to go through the whole processing to be uh, arraigned on the warrant. So we're asking the warrant be set aside and he'd be allowed to um, be released on the, the bond that was set. And I'm um, hopefully it's verified 1,000 personal bond. That's what uh, Madam Clerk is telling me. Um, so that's what we'll do. Uh, court will set bond at 1,000 personal 
in accordance with the uh, KPS that's in the file. Next court date is March 13, probable cause conference, and March 20th, preliminary exam, both in front of Judge Elias Sabri. Show up this time, sir. You can step aside. Have you ever had a failure to appear? Possible. Please tell me that's a joke. Stage four. <clears throat> Good afternoon. What's your name, please? Brandon Green. Good afternoon. Thank you, sir. Uh, this will be case 2206-0728, State of Michigan versus Brandon Christopher Green, counsel. Rita White on behalf of Mr. Brandon Christopher Green, Green for arraignment purposes, go away from the reading and mute. Thank you. Court will enter not guilty. Plea on your client's behalf. Yeah, potential. Uh, Mr. Green is 39 years old. Uh, Your Honor, this is a non-assault defense of CCW. He currently is, um, works as a caregiver for his mother. He has five uh, children. Counsel, counsel, I hate to interrupt you. It's um, it's not assaultive, but it's a failure to pay support, not CCW. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I looked at the other. Yes. So we're asking that. Uh, this, uh, he currently you works as a for his mother. On. Thank you. Sir, for your benefit, uh, in cases of this uh, nature, court is statutorily bound to set bond at 25% of the outstanding arrears, which is about $12,000, unless uh, court finds good cause to deviate from that statutory guideline. Uh, given the ongoing global health crisis, court does find good cause to deviate. Court will set bond at $4,000 personal. Uh, next court date is going to be March 22, probable cause, April 12, preliminary exam, both in front of Judge Bill and Frank Murphy Hall of Justice. Thank you, sir. You can step aside. Okay, I have one question. Uh, my name sure. is not Brandon Chris Christopher Green. I don't know who Brandon Christopher Green is. I'm Brandon Tyshawn Green. What's your date of birth, sir? Six five nineteen eighty three. This isn't him. What's an issue? Hmm? Well, it's, it is the charges listed as failure to pay. Is uh, the mother of the child, Ms. Townsend, Darnisha Townsend? I have no clue who that is. And I spoke with a friend of the court Wednesday. We made arrangements, so I have no idea what this is about, honestly. Do you have any <laughs> children, sir, that you have a child support obligation for? Yes, I actually do. I have uh, five children. Uh, um, the case is... Named, any of them named Angela? No. Oh. We have Trish Williams, Kimiko Hardaway, um, Laquita Rogers. Um, who's the other one? Who's the, Latina Mack. Those are the mothers <laughs> on the cases. He's having a hard time pulling in the name. I don't know who uh, Angela <laughs> or nothing like that. I mean, this might be a real mix up. I don't know. He was arraigned on a separate charge yesterday and received a $2,000 bond. That was a case I mistakenly. Uh, titled under the CCW that he was interviewed yesterday and I believe arraigned and he had this other matter that came up today but I don't know right. if it's him. What's his middle name, uh, What's your middle name again, sir? If you can spell it. Tyshawn, capital T-Y-S-H-A-W-N. 
Yeah. Yeah, they got the wrong person. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, council, I'm a little, little bit of a loss of what to do. Um, obviously, I don't have the power to either decide whether this is him or not, or to dismiss. Um, I guess my two options would be to give him a personal bond and he can work out the identity issue uh, at some future hearing or not to not finish the arraignment and then he'll time out, but that'll probably keep him there longer. What's your preference? Well, Your Honor, I think he needs to work this out. And I, I mean, it's a matter of whether he wants to just have this dismissed. I know they can dismiss without prejudice and it's just going to be a processing matter. I just prefer that he has no charge against him instead of waiting for them to figure out whether he's going to be charged or not. So I would ask that this matter be dismissed. The felony, the felony non I, mean, I, I don't have the authority to, dis to dismiss counsel. You know that. Oh um, yeah, just not proceed with the, the arraignment. Time it. I mean, it's either time them out. Or... Yeah. There's the people across the street left. I mean, you know what? Um, I think the better thing to do here is to um, give him a personal bond and let him work it out. Um, because it doesn't sound like it's him, but I don't have the authority to dismiss. So I'm going to set bond at 4,000 personal. Um, those dates are, are March 22 and April 12th in front of Judge Bill. And I would suggest that you, um, how can you get in touch with counsel uh, after he's released, Ms. White? Um, it depends on who's appointed to represent him. And that's through processing, case processing. Right. So he can call, right. I can give him phone number. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe he's lying. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe this is a mix up. I think the judge is spot on. He can't dismiss it. All right. The, the prosecutor. So yes, he should be that. able to within 48 hours, an attorney will be appointed and he can um, look at the go to the go to the 36 district court website, pull his name up and the attorney should be listed. With the phone the contact information. If if it's not, we're going to actually text him information today as to how to access the thirty six district court website. He'll be cut. He'll be okay. cut loose today. If it's okay, not, sir, you him, understand all that? We'll, we'll dismiss it. Yes, thank you. I, I was wondering why I was still being held here, and I had personal bond yesterday, and I'm still here for a yeah. case that is not even me. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So thank much. You. His demeanor makes him so believable. Okay, yeah, I, 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 by looking at him and the way he's acting and not being crazy, I, I think it's a myth. I don't know, but that's my guess. I think they got the wrong guy, and, the, and those charges are going to be dismissed. Thank you, sir. This case 2205930, State of Michigan versus Defendant 2, Lamario Boston, Lamario Sanzel Boston Council. Rita White on behalf of Mr. Lamario Sanzel Boston. For arraignment purposes, he will waive formal reading, stand mute. Thank you. Court will enter not guilty plea uh, on your client's behalf as the bond. Your Honor, it does appear that a KPS was issued on September 2nd for $1,000, 10% um, before Judge Robin. Do you guys have a KPS on this one? Uh, what's the case number? Who is it? Uh, Boston. Oh, she didn't start on the case. 
Yes, yeah, ten thousand or one thousand ten percent. Yeah. Okay. And no matter what, I'm the very much. You guys have not um, had a chance to speak with uh, <laughs> the uh, judge of record on this. I don't believe so. Okay, uh, Mr. Boston. While this case is pending, you are not to possess a firearm. Is that clear, sir? Yes, sir. Court will set. Uh, bond in accordance with the capius at 1,010%. Yeah, just ride that train. Council, is that going to be affordable or unaffordable? Are you able to post $100, Mr. Boston? $100? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay thank you, sir. So that, um, sir, if you post, uh, then you'll be out. If for whatever reason you don't post by tomorrow morning, we'll have another hearing uh, on the uh, bond amount. Uh, that's going to be tomorrow, March 6th uh, at 9.30 a.m. But if you do post, don't worry about it. Uh, next dates after that will be March 13th, probable cause conference. And that's going to be in front of Judge Robbins. March 20th for preliminary exam. Uh, judge to be determined. Thank you, sir. You can step aside. This is the sort of interlude you need for the for the Detroit Detention Center. <laughs> I, I got nothing to be honest with you, Mortimer. I got nothing. I, I don't know what to do with that. For tomorrow, one, three, four. Stick to only. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name, please? Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Joseph Patterson. Thank you. This is case 2304-286, State of Michigan versus Joseph Aaron Patterson, counsel. Peter White, on behalf of Mr. Joseph Aaron Patterson, for arraignment purposes, Mr. Patterson will wait for more reading stand here. Thank you. Court will enter not guilty plea on your client's behalf as to bond. Uh, Mr. Patterson is 39 years old. He is employed as a truck driver where he works full time every day. Um, your Honor, he does not have any prior criminal convictions history nor a KPS history. Um, he is a 2002 graduate from Mumford High School, has two years of college experience. Um, your Honor, he actually. Um, Complainant, I believe, was residing at the home. However, he um, is in the process of evicting the complainant from the home, and he is aware that that matter will have to make sure it addresses a no contact with the complainant during that process. Uh, with the fact that I don't believe the complainant is living at the home right now, if he is not, I'm requesting you allow him to return to the home of Corvalon. Either way, um, no contact order he will comply with. Um, overall, given his profile, he has no history of um, any assaulted convictions, nor any convictions, period, plus no KPS history, we are requesting you allow him to be placed on a personal bond. So you mentioned Clover Lawn. All I've got is Washburn. I've got his address on Washburn, her address, the same Washburn address, and the place of offense on Washburn. It looks like your client wants to help us figure this out. Yeah, I believe it's can a I family home, but he can go can ahead. Okay, so what it is, is Mrs. Terrell is homeless. So I didn't want my kids in the street. So I allowed her to stay a couple of days at my house. After, you know, a couple, us quarreling, I asked her to leave and that's yeah, how this is. Just ensued. be careful what you say, because we don't want anything you say to be used against me. So nothing regarding the yes. allegations. Okay, yes, she doesn't live at uh, 20185 Washburn. I stay at 20185 Washburn. My girlfriend at, lives on 23150 Cloverline in Oak Park. Uh, uh, 
Council, um, the girlfriend in Oak Park, is that the complaining witness here? Mr. Patterson, that's not, she's not connected to the case, correct? Girlfriend no, ma'am, not at all. No, yeah. ma'am, at all. No, not at all. Yeah. All right, so here's what we'll do. Sir, while this case is pending, you're to have no contact with Ms. Terrell. No problem. If she's at the Washburn address, you can't go there. I would suggest you go live in Oak Park with your girlfriend. Is that clear? Yeah, that is fine, sir. No problem. Uh, Judge, she's just kind of a side chick. It's not really a live-in scenario. <laughs> but okay, whatever. I want to get out today. What's your client's ability to post, counsel? Your Honor, um, he does have several children that he is maintaining care of. So we're asking for a very nominal bond. Um, given the fact this is a misdemeanor, I mean, I would say at the most 500. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> okay, sir. And your attorney earlier mentioned that uh, apparently you're trying to evict uh, Ms. Terrell. Obviously, that's a whole legal process. And to well, I mean, she... hold, on, hold on. I don't want you to say anything. Just want to yes, give sir. you my my thoughts on it. Um, yes, sir. That's a whole process, and to the extent that you have not yet obtained a legal eviction of her from Washburn, then you can't go there um, while she may still be there. Court will set bond on this matter at Don't kill me, Yana. <laughs> Struggling, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Court will set bond at one thousand dollars, ten percent. Is that going to be affordable, counsel? Believe so, Mister. One hundred dollars. That's fine. Okay. Okay. All right. If you do post, sir, your next court date, Madam Clerk, what's the next date on this? On um, Patterson. Yes. Pre-trial uh, March 13th, March 13th, before Judge uh, Austin Garrett. Okay. Your next court date, sir, is going to be a pre-trial March 13th in front of Judge Garrett. If for whatever reason you don't post, by tomorrow morning, we'll have a bond redetermination first thing in the morning. Um, but if you do post, don't worry about tomorrow. Just be sure to show up March 13th in front of Judge Garrett. Understand? And that's at 30, is that at 36 district court? 36 district. Are those? Um, you will be by Zoom, but it's at 36, but they'll give you the Zoom. 36 district court. Hell yeah. Okay, no problem. Here. March the 13th, I'll be there, sir. Yes, sir. 36 D. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you. That's all the men, right? Yeah, so I'll meet you on the female side. Okay. Okay, Your Honor, can I ask one question? Sure. And, and then posted it. I was I was told I would I would have to get an emergency eviction from the the He's from your attorney. downtown. Once I give her that eviction, will I be able to go back to my home or do I have to wait those four term days out on the eviction for me to return to my home? I would suggest you take that issue up with <laughs> Judge Garrett on the 13th. Yes. Okay, not a problem. Thank you, sir. Good answer. Okay. You will be in the 36th District Court.
Ladies, get a chair. Bring on the ladies. I hope none of them were kidnapped. Good afternoon. What's your name, please? Brianna Well, Thank just you. the camera. Two three zero four four two eight five, State of Michigan versus Brianna Maria Patton, Council. Rita White on behalf of Miss Brianna Marie Patton. For arraignment purposes, wait for my reading and mute. Thank you. Court will enter not guilty plea on your client's behalf as to bond plea. Ms. Patton is 24 years old. She represents she has no prior criminal history, no KPS history. She is currently employed with Superior Visions direct, as a direct care worker. She's been employed in that capacity for charge. over eight years. She lives with her mother and son and does not live or have any, um, does not live in any vicinity near the complainant. My Honor. Did you say what, Miss? Um, so, uh, Your Honor, she is aware that there will be a no contact order put in place, which she will abide by. She has one child, which is a four year old, that she is the primary sole caretaker of, I believe. Um, that um, for that reason, she needs to be out to be able to maintain care of her child. And also, she will comply with the conditions of her bond. With that, Your Honor, we are requesting a personal bond. Thank you, Council. I do have some concerns here. Um, you know, she's a uh, she works as a care provider. She's got Gary a small looks child. Great. But yet it's alleged here that you know she was drinking and doing coke, which led her to uh, get into a fight with a complaining witness, punching him, kicking him, pulling out his hair. Uh, sounds like we need some sort of. Um, rug something screaming or something going on all right man uh, while this case is pending you are not to uh drink alcohol for any reason you're not to use any drugs for any reason and you're to have no contact with mr Lathan. is all that clear to you what you talking about Rose? okay Is that a yes or no? I'll take it as a yes. I think that's my plan. That's my plan. Ordered drug screening. Like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 You know, testing. Indeed. And most of us don't. Capacity. Yeah. I've never done anything. All right. I'll let Judge Garrett deal with that. All right, man. The bond's going to be set at five thousand dollars personal. And hold on one second. I thought I had an answer. Um, and next court date is March thirteen for a pretrial in front of Judge Garrett. Anything else on this record, Counsel? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, DDC. That's everybody, right? Yes, sir. All right. Thanks for everything. Have a great day. Thank you guys too. Have a great one. Yeah. Take care. Have a nice Stay day. warm. You know what the weather will be. Well, that's it. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. I, I've got something else up my sleeve. Hang in there just a second. Let me find it. Let me find it. I was ready for this very contingency.
Mr. Shepard, that's another misdemeanor, Your Honor. Shepard, thank you. Yep. Mr. There it is, James Abel, or James Abel, James Shepard. That's my brother's name. <laughs> I started mixing names up, boy, I'm telling you like that. That's, that's my brother's my name. name. <laughs> <laughs> is there, are you uh, James Shepard? Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Zabel. Your Honor, Neil Zabel representing Mr. Shepard. Your Honor, I met with Mr. Shepard, went over his misdemeanor rights with him. He said he understood those rights and waived the reading. Mr. Shepard would like to enter a guilty plea today and ask, ask for credit for two days' time already served. Thank you. All right, we're in Genesee County now. I was locked up when I caught this case, too, and my uh, car got impounded, too, if that makes any difference. I was prepared to bond out and pay the 250 for the ticket get out because i do have i go to work uh hudson atlas capco i missed uh work last night i had to call okay now, I, I, mr okay, shepherd that's let's, okay let's, you don't, uh, let me do the talking yeah. okay okay yeah. i'm sorry let's I'm get sorry. that you're all right you're all right well, let's just kind of get up to that point and maybe i'll if i ask any questions for you um you being charged with driving with license suspended does carry a penalty of up to 93 days in jail under fine of up to 500 dollars it's alleged occurred in city of burton on may 20th 2021 do you understand that charge yes okay and mr zabo went through your rights with you is that right yeah yes your honor do you understand those rights yes your honor okay how do you wish to plead you driving with license suspended I'm guilty of it, sir. Okay. Is it true that on this date, time, and location, you're guilty of driving a vehicle with license suspended by having, I guess, I was probably outstanding tickets that weren't paid? Is that what it was? Your Honor, I don't have a license. Your Honor, I, I, uh, oh, anytime I pull it up, I, I just don't have. I don't have a license. I've, I've never applied. Okay. Never had. Just never had one. Okay. Do you understand if I accept your guilty plea, you won't have a trial of any kind, give up all the rights that you would have a trial, and you may be faced with yep. those penalties? Yes, Your Honor. Has Has anybody made any threats or promises to cause you to plead guilty? No, Your Honor. No, we'll just do it easy for you. We'll do two days jail, credit for two days, and we'll just close the file for you. Okay. Yes, sir. Go get 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 a license, though. Yeah, that's the worst thing that have happened to you. Things are really falling apart for you. Okay. Yeah, first thing would be the job, and then everything else that come with it. That's the test to it. Good. So, Good. so uh, do I have, do I have to pay any money today to no, get out no, of jail? You're out. You're out, Mr. Shepard. No, nope. you're, you're, you're all done. I'm out. Yeah, I'm you're all done. Out. Run. So I'm gonna Run. go Run. Run. Simple. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're, 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 are you too? Bye now. <laughs> he does. He does. Let's do it. It's another misdemeanor, Judge Hawthorne. Hawthorne, there he is. Thank you. Yep. Please. Oh man, I gotta get together. Yeah, she's. Sir, you uh, Derek Hawthorne. Sir. Okay, Mr. Zabo. Yes, Your Honor. Neil Zabo, representing Mr. Hawthorne. Your Honor, I met with Mr. Hawthorne. I went over his misdemeanor rights with him. He told this me guy's he understood those do. rights. I kind of like reading. It. Also went over Mr. Hawthorne's ticket with him, including the maximum possible penalty. He told me he'd like to enter a guilty plea to that ticket and ask for credit for two days already served. Thank you. Okay. Sir, um, is that information true? Correct. Okay. Being charged with um, operating motor vehicle without security does carry penalty of up to 90 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. It's alleged to occur June 12th, 2021 in uh, city of, City of Flint? Yeah, City of Flint, Genesee County, Michigan. Do you understand that charge? Sir. I'm sorry, is that, I'm sorry, is that yes? I missed the... Yes, sir. Okay. How do you wish to plead to this charge? Good. Is it true that on this date, time and location, you're guilty of operating a vehicle without security, that being insurance for the vehicle? Is that true? Yes, sir. 
It, is it your vehicle or were you driving somebody else's vehicle? Yeah, it was my, my uh, spouse's vehicle at the time. Okay. Do you understand that if I accept your guilty plea, you won't have a trial and you can give up all the rights that you would have a trial and you may be faced with those penalties. Like two days ago. Yes, sir. Has anybody made any threats or promises to cause you to plead guilty? Oh, yeah, sorry. I'll see if I can. I'll see if I can rent that. Guilty off. plea to the charge. <laughs> I'll accept guilty plea, Mr. Zeb. I'm sorry, you said how many? How two days. Been in there for two days. Okay. Order two two days jail credit for two days, and we'll close the file for you. Okay, you're all set. All right. What well, uh, what happens? What do I do? You're free to leave. You, you're. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye now. Run along. Before something goes wrong. Probably that's the easiest way to say it. You're free to leave. That's probably. <laughs> they understand <laughs> that. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Terry Jones. That one's understood a lot easier, I think. How you doing, Mr. Goggins? Good, sir. Wait, what's your name? That's uh, Juan Claybrook, Goggins. sir. Claybrook. Okay. Felony. Antoine Claybrook. Mr. Zabel? Yes, Your Honor. Neil Zabel represented Mr. Claybrook. Your Honor, I met with Mr. Claybrook, went over his felony rights with him, including his right to a preliminary examination within 21 days. Mr. Claybrook told me he understood those rights and waived the reading of those. Uh, I also went over Mr. Claybrook's felony complaint with him, which also includes a misdemeanor count. Mr. Claybrook told me he understood the charges and the maximum yeah, cool. possible penalties would waive the reading of There's that as well. Mr. Claybrook is employed at Closair, makes approximately $13.50 an hour, would request the court appointed attorney. Okay. Mr. Claybrook, is that information true? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. This will be assigned to Judge McCabe. Order a court appointed attorney for you set probable cause conference March 16th at one o'clock examination date for March 22nd. Uh, let's see. You get, you have someplace else you can go to live. Looks like you live with your girlfriend. Is that true? No, she don't live there anymore. And, um, no. she's, she's no, no, she don't live there no more. Yeah, we already okay. got it took yeah. four months ago because we got to meet up. I guess I'm talking. Make sure I'm talking about Devin. Devin Jones, yes. the right person. Yes. Okay. Yes, because yes, because we have to. Uh, you know, we have a CPS case from this, so we not together. You know, but okay. we everything. Was, yeah. Yeah, that, that was the next thing I was going to ask about too. So, you, so you got CPS involved then? Okay. Yes. We'll set. We'll set a. $5,000 personal recognizance bond on each count, one and two. Conditions are that um, you have no contact with the alleged victim. Um, follow any recommendations of CPS. Not use any alcohol or illegal drugs. Yes, Ron. And submit to submit to random testing and fingerprints in the file and we'll leave it at that for you okay thank you sir i appreciate that all right, all right you're welcome thank you at least he knew enough to leave uh, it was uh okay. So what, what's your name? Uh, Kyle Hayes. Oh, you guys are really sweet Kyle this morning. Kyle Hayes, there it is. Mr. Zabo? I guess yes, afternoon Your Honor, now. Neil Zabo represented Mr. Hayes. Your Honor, I met with Mr. Hayes, went over his felony rights with him, including his right to a preliminary examination within 21 days. Mr. Hayes told me he understood those rights and waived the reading. Also went over Mr. Hayes' complaint with him, including the maximum possible penalties on each charge. Mr. Hayes told me he understood 
the charges and the possible penalties and waive the reading of that as well. Mr. Hayes is employed at Universal Coding, makes approximately $14 an hour, would request the court appointed attorney. Okay, Mr. Hayes, is that information true? Yes, sir. Okay, this will be assigned to Judge Haley. Order a court appointed attorney set probable cause conference for March 16th at 11 o'clock, examination date for March 21st. Uh, Do you have anything else pending, sir, at all? Or is this it? <laughs> any what was any that? other cases? Any other cases uh, pending? I'm not sure. I think there might be one more. I'm not, I don't, not Give really one sure. <laughs> What's that? $5,000 personal recognizance bond on each count, one and two. Conditions are that you not use any alcohol or illegal drugs. Submit to random drug and alcohol testing. Yes, Your Honor. Not a problem. Okay. Order. I see. Yeah. I guess fingerprints are in the file, it looks like. Uh, we'll leave it at that for you. You're, you're all set. The hair is fantastic today. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. Oh, man, I got to get together. Well, we got a beard do here. What's your name? Jesse Lenore. Lenore. There it is. Jesse Lenore. Mr. Zabo? Yes, Your Honor. Neil Zabo represented Mr. Lenore. Your Honor, I met with Mr. Lenore, went over his felony rights with him, including his right to a preliminary examination within 21 days. Mr. Lenore told me he understood those rights, would waive the reading, also went over Mr. Lenore's felony complaint with him, including the maximum possible penalty. Mr. Lenore told me he understood the charge and the maximum possible penalty, would waive the reading of that as well. Mr. Lenore works at Magpie Oil Change, makes approximately $16 an hour, would request a court appointed attorney. Okay. Mr. Lenore, is that information true? Just needs a drill. Yes, sir. Okay. Judge McCabe. Order court appointed attorney set probable cause conference March 16th at one o'clock. Examination date for March 22nd. Set a five thousand dollar personal recognizance bond condition that you not possess any firearms or dangerous weapons. Do you have any yes, hunting sir. equipment at home? No, Your Honor. No. Okay. All right, you're you're all set. Fingerprints in the file. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I am feeling better. I just started feeling better last night at ten o'clock, so I decided to stream. <laughs> UK in the house. Love it. Morning, everybody. Sir, so what's your name? My name is Joseph Munsinger. Munsinger? Boy, I'm sorry. What was it again? Munsinger. Munsinger? Oh, there it is. Yeah, Joseph Thanks. Munsinger. Mr. Zabo? Yes, Your Honor. Neil Zabo representing Mr. Munsinger. Your Honor, I met with him. I went over his misdemeanor rights with him. He told me he understood his rights and waived the reading. Also went over his misdemeanor complaint with him, including the maximum possible penalties on each charge. Mr. Mudsinger told me he understood the charges and the possible penalties, would waive the reading of those as well. Mr. Mudsinger is employed at NAPTIDE, 
makes approximately $18 an hour, would request the court appointed attorney. Okay. Mr. Mansinger, is that information true? Yes, it is, sir, Your Honor. Okay, one, all right, one or not guilty plea order court appointed attorney set pretrial for March Thank you. 13th at nine, nine o'clock. Set a All right. I told you this is the fallback video. I didn't know if anything was on it. I'm 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 watching it with you. We'll, we'll see if we discover any gems. So far, so far the thumbnail competition I think is being $1, led $1, by dollar cash surety bond and count one. Them charging $5, the wrong guy. Cash surety and count two. Condition that you not possess any firearms or dangerous weapons. Okay. No contact with the alleged victim. That being uh, Jonathan Kajowski. Also, not to use any alcohol or illegal drugs. Submit to random drug and alcohol testing. And we'll leave it at that. You've got You're the house right there. in the house. How cool is wow. that? Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. My, so I just need to know am I, do right. I have a PR? Hey. We've got Canada no. in the house. No, $10,000 cash surety and count one, $5,000 cash surety and count two. So can I help and understand what that means then? Yeah, you got to post that cash surety bond, 10000 and 5000 But you can talk oh, to wow. the bonds person over there. Okay. Then I would need help with that. I didn't know that was even going to be a possibility. So I'll need okay. help with that. Okay. The bonds person over there will help you out. Aussie, okay. Aussie, Aussie. Okay. Thank you. All right. Love All it. You're welcome. Yep. Would you would you tell the deputies to I need Claybrook back back again at some point here? I, I, I just did see the email. Yeah. And Mr. Zabo, there was a okay. um email I got from uh, an Antoine Claybrook. I'm just gonna have him brought back in. Okay. South Dakota, that is I, impressive. I, it's just regarding the bond. I, okay. There's Judge, like there's, there's a matter there. about Chuck Desitel. One of them's He's watching. at the jail now. He's in the lobby. Uh <laughs> He needs to get in, <laughs> so we need to tell the deputy to, to let Chuck in. Even though he was given the Zoom number, he decided to go to the jail. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. You all need to get Knox back online. Okay. Oh, that oh, oh, just meant, sir. Can, can you um? Jail number. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, we don't have any control of it. We can let let them know. The number. The... Let them in if they can. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure how they can do it over there. Can they do it over there still? Yeah, usually you can just buzz the, the door to the back that goes to the video Michigan. room. Chuck probably doesn't realize that. Virginia. They like him, but. Oh. Loving it. Okay. Okay. Germany. Sir, so what's your name on the monitor awesome. there? Antoine Claybrook, sir. New York City. Claybrook, okay. Ireland. California. This is fun. Mr. Claybrook, I um, received an email I got after I was concluded with you. I've got some concerns for public Ohio. safety here. Looks like you had some issues oh with CPS. Now we got forty percent of the population. Yeah, South they just Dakota came one. up and talked to me yesterday. We got it all figured out. They actually came up here yesterday. Love you, South Dakota. I said everything would gotcha. be good. Yeah, I swear to God, I wouldn't lie right, to well, you. All right, I, I just. Got some concerns for public safety. Oh, no. Set a, um, no, you've got Judge Webster and Judge Hart and Judge Gettler. Kansas is loaded, locked and loaded for good cases. <laughs> I'm going to get fired from my job. $10,000 cash surety count one, $5,000 cash Arkansas. surety count two. Oh. And that can, you can have Judge McCabe review it as well, but right now that's. What I'm putting on the file. Okay. So 10, South 20, Carolina. 10,000 cash surety. Personal knowledge of yeah. Alex Murdoch. Yeah. 
yeah, until we sort through this it a bit. Spot to be. I'm a little bit concerned. Of Southampton, New York. Everybody's safety. Florida. You're you're all set though. Toronto. God. Indiana. People's Republic of Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got Mr. Desatel. Mr. Desatel? Good you, morning. You, did you make it in? Good morning. Are you in the jail or where? Okay. I'm, on, I'm on the road outside the jail. Alberta. <laughs> they were going to let him in, but we're we're going to do it this way now? Is, is, yeah. Scotland. Okay. All right. Deputies, whoever we got, just send, send them in. I got both attorneys waiting anxiously. <laughs> I should be at church right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, my my wife would tell me the same thing. I think so. Boy, right. I would. <laughs> I'd probably be a lot safer there. <laughs> Just received international attention. Yeah, or maybe. <laughs> Good morning, sir. How's it going, Mr. Goggins? Good, sir. I'm sorry. What, what, what's your name? Uh, Nicholas William Erlenbeck. New Jersey. Love it. Erlenbeck. Okay, Nicholas Erlenbeck. Uh, Mr. Desto's Montana. Is that right? It is. Be out west skiing right now. Okay. I didn't get out this year, and I'm and that speaking see, with let's... Colorado. Did you get a chance to review anything with it, or you just, is this a quick just show up for you? No, nope, I, I met with him yesterday, Your Honor. Our friendly neighbors. Okay. Yes. You're, uh, you're being charged with domestic assault and battery. Carries a penalty of up to wow. 93 days in jail under a fine of up to $500. Good. Also being charged with resisting obstructing a police officer. That also carries a penalty of up to 93 days in jail under a fine of up to $500. Do you understand both Georgia. charges? Uh, no, sir. I don't, you don't understand those. Do you understand you could be faced with that penalty of up to 93 days in each case? Austria. I mean, each count, uh, I guess. I, I heard you correctly. I just didn't. I don't know laws too well. Okay, well, the domestic the assault battery, you, Maryland. If you're found guilty of that charge, you could be faced with up to 93 days in jail. Do you understand that? It's fun. Uh, I didn't, but I guess I do now. <laughs> okay, okay, so I'll as you do now, I guess that Mr. Destell, uh, unless I hear an objection or something, I guess we'll kind of. Yeah, no, no objection. Me. Nicholas, we went over this yesterday. Um, you recall the two charges that you're charged with and the judge is just informing you that worst case scenario, you could face jail time of up to 93 days. That's what he's informing you of. Okay. However, is, is bail possible? Well, that's where we're well, getting we, to. We, we're, yeah, okay. we're going to get there in just a second, okay? We'll even get North uh, Dakota. You did sign in divisive rights for me. Did you read and understand those rights? Um, don't remember? Oh. I don't exactly recall. I'm sorry. All right, let, let's go through them. You have the right to have a trial in this matter, at which time you have the right to have a trial before a judge or a jury. Virginia. You have the right to act as your own lawyer or lawyer to yeah. represent yourself. If you decided to plead guilty... You'd also have the right to have a lawyer present at the guilty plea. If you cannot afford a lawyer and you're eligible, the court would appoint one for you. You have the right to subpoena, call witnesses of your own at trial. You have the right to confront and question under oath any witnesses called against you. Also have the right to testify at trial or not to testify at trial. If you decided okay, not to watch. testify at trial, it would not be held against you. And you have the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. Okay. Winner, not guilty plea on both charges. Um, Mr. Dessa, are you retained? I am, yeah. Okay. Set a pretrial for March 9th at 8.30. Um, do you wish to address bond? Yes, please. Judge, uh, I've been uh, meeting with the family, um, specifically mom and dad, for the last few days. Um, Mr. Erlenbeck's been in jail. It's his fifth day. It's actually his birthday today. Um, he's 22 years old today. He's enrolled at Mott Community College. 
Um, zero criminal history whatsoever, as you can probably guess by his naivety in this process. Um, I would ask, Your Honor, that a personal recognizance bond be set. Um, I talked to Nicholas yesterday, and he's agreed that if the court were willing to do that, within 24 hours, he would appear at community mental health for an evaluation. Okay. Sir, are you, are you on currently, are you on medications at all or not? Uh, no, sir. I, I recently got off for, for okay. a long time. Okay, that's probably, okay. Mr. Dustin, uh, I guess I'm, I'm trusting you're going to help me out with, with, um, does he live at home normally? He, he does. And we've discussed that and Nicholas said that he could find a different place to live because obviously there'll be a no contact order with dad, but dad also yeah. said that if necessary, until we you know, get a little further in the process, dad would be willing to move out as well. Okay. All right, so, so for the time being, there, there's no contact, okay? That means no telephone calls, texting, social media, anything, okay? No contacting my dad. Whatever, we, yep, no contacting your dad for the time being. Okay. No contact. Um, not to use any alcohol or illegal drugs. Submit to random testing. And I'm just going to put down, remain on any prescribed medications. So if you're getting, seeking help, make sure whatever they're on, you're on, you need to stay on it. Okay. And then we'll set a $3,000 personal recognizance bond on each count. I'm trusting you're going to, well, you know what, Mr. Destel, is, can he just go over to mental health then? Is he all set to, to do that somehow? He, yes, he can. Mom's got it all arranged. Okay. So, sir, the last condition on there is that you um, seek mental health treatment, okay? Uh, okay, and you're you're all set. You'll be out. You'll be out later today. Later today. From yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, okay, good you luck, Jake. You too. Bye now. Well, that was that was just too reasonable for for this channel, all around. I need someone to come in here and stir it up. And sir, what, what's your name? Gustavo Tapio de Okay. Uh, Mr. Destel, this is yours as well? That's correct, Your Honor. Sure. Um, you're being charged with carrying a concealed weapon, carries a penalty of up to five years in jail, and a fine of up to $2,500 with mandatory forfeiture of the weapon. Also being charged with possession of a controlled substance less than 25 grams, carries a penalty of up to four years in prison and or a fine of up to $25,000. There would also be mandatory licensing sanctions imposed through the court. Oh, I'm sorry, that's changed. I keep going through that, but strike that you. last part about mandatory sanctions. This is, Both of these are alleged to have occurred on March 1st, 2023, City of Flint, Genesee County, Michigan. You understand those two charges? Yes, sir. Okay. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally in writing can be held against you in court. You have the right to have a lawyer present during any questioning. You also have the right to have a lawyer present during any court proceedings. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you at public expense. You also have the right to have a probable cause conference within 14 days and a preliminary examination date within 21 days, at which time prosecution must establish that a crime has been committed and probable cause exists to believe that you've committed those crimes. Do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Desitel, these will be assigned to Judge Odette. With, I'll see what uh, I can do. Let's see. <laughs> Prob probable cause. 
conference on March 16th on at me. 11 o'clock. Examination date on March 21st. Uh, I do have to, it looks like I have to order fingerprints. I don't know why they haven't been taken, but Genesee County Sheriff's Department fingerprints, they haven't been taken already. Uh, do you wish to address Bond then? Yes, thank you, Judge. I've also um, met with Mr. Tapia Dianda yesterday at the jail. Uh, he's 26 years old, has zero criminal history as well. Um, he's had the same employment for the last six years at Acu Global Tech as a parts inspector. Um, and I would ask that based on his lack of criminal history, um, he's been in jail for about five days yeah. now, that a PR bond be set. Obviously, I'm retained. How about Dr. Um, Phil while we're at it? His family and significant others um, have reached out, and he's taking this extremely serious, and I have no doubt that he would follow all the bonds that you put it in place, Your Honor. Okay. So is that information true as well? Yes, sir. We'll set a $5,000 personal recognizance bond in each count, one and two. Conditions are that you're not using the alcohol or illegal drugs, submit to random drug and alcohol testing, not to possess any firearms or dangerous weapons. I hear we're losing Cowlitz County calls. Maintain employment. We'll just leave it at that, okay? That's tough if it's if it's Thank true. You. And you're 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 welcome. You're all set. All right, Gustavo, I'll call Danielle and let her know to come pick you up in the next hour or two. Hopefully. All right, thank you very much. And that's all I judge. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks, sister. That's tell. All right. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye. Yeah, you too. Bye. Is people's court still a thing? I mean, to me, if it's not Judge Wapner, it's not people's court. Let's spice this up, shall we? That was, that was, and I hate, God, I hate this. I thought some dick pussy, dick pussy, dick pussy, dick pussy, going back and forth between texts with one another, and I never want to hear it again. <laughs> it never gets old. It's so good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Judge Manning. <laughs> Sir, what's your name? That's a long time. Oh, I saw this. Uh, Mr. Zabo? Yes, Your Honor. Neil Zabo represented Mr. Longton. Your Honor, I met with Mr. Longton, went over his misdemeanor rights with him. Mr. Longton told me he understood those rights and weighed the reading. Also met with Mr. Longton and went over his misdemeanor complaint with him, including the maximum possible penalty. Mr. Longton told me he understood the complaint and possible penalty and would waive the reading of that as well. Mr. Longton's on SSI, makes approximately $1,200 a uh, month. I'm all request the court appointed attorney. <laughs> okay, Mr. Longton, is that information true? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, will, enter not, will enter not guilty plea for you or the court appointed attorney set pre-trial for March 13th at nine o'clock. So, um, Mr. Longton, do you know Michael? Oh, it's, he's in RN. Michael Primo. Do you know Michael Primo at all? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, no. No. Okay. Oh, he's got a drug problem. That that much is clear. So I don't know what out today, so right. the rest of it is. Uh, we're gonna figure it out right right now. Yep. Okay. Where do you okay. live normally? I was still at Flushing Road. I was still at Flushing Road with my brother. Yeah. With your with your brother? Okay. Yes. Yeah, I know. I can't see. I he's think really he's got face tats. Because you know, I've been, you know, I have, yeah, I've I think been, you. 
I mean, I gotta get we, back home. Like you, yeah, it looks like you were overdosing at the hospital. Is that right? Correct, Your Honor. I was. Yeah, that's the way that's a... Okay. Uh, Mr. Zabel, anything else with regard to bond, I guess? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Mr. Mr. Longton told me he's not on probation or parole. He's lived in Genesee County all his life, 34 years. Uh, told me he has a felony assault conviction from four years ago. I went over all the felony crimes with him, assault crimes, and he doesn't know which one that was. Uh, but he told me he's always kept his court dates. Uh, respectfully, I'd ask the okay. court to consider personal recognizance bond on his behalf. Thank you. Okay. okay. Sir Longton, I, uh, boy, I'm, I'm just concerned with the drug use right now still. What, the set of, um, uh, yeah. Uh, I understand your five, honor. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll, I, I go to NAV and stuff like that. I like them little, you know, them little places that seem to be serve working. Coffee and little cookies yeah. and stuff like that. There's a place over off uh, Corona Road where I go there with my friends, my sister in law, Angel, and my buddy, her brother, my other brother, Robbie, over there. Okay. Um, um, that place over there. There's a couple other one I go to too, and I, I could probably start doing that when I get up out of here. Okay. Wait, I want you. To, yeah, and I appreciate. I, I do. I do, Mr. Lante. I just got quite frankly concerned for your safety. We we'll set a um. A life together. Time being five thousand. Okay. Five thousand dollar cash surety bond. Conditioning uh, using the alcohol or illegal drugs. So Unfortunately, color coded. I think that's testing. where we are. And we'll just leave it at that for right now. Judge, I think it looks like it might be Judge. Oh, uh, um, <laughs> it's assigned to. I, I guess I'm in control over that. We'll, we'll just leave it at that for it. Judge Maribel. We'll see you next week. I'm guessing. Okay. Judge Maribel. You're, you're all set. I want that hearing, but they don't. They all don't right. them anymore. Thank you, sir. All right. You're welcome. Bye. Um. Thank you. I'll be. I'll be getting out of here. Uh, today, right? Working yeah, on probably not, unless you can post that bond right now. I want you to stay there just to kind of. What's my bond? What is it again, sir? Just five five thousand dollar cash surety, like ten. It's gonna be like a ten percent of that five hundred dollars. Five thousand dollars. So I so ten percent that's five hundred, right? To get out. Yeah, it's gonna be about five hundred. Yeah, but talk to yeah, the you bonds. Do that math, huh? Mister Zabel, just for my, they still have a bonds person come in there, right? Well, they, they still do that. They usually, they usually do. I've never. I've been over there on the weekends where, when the Zoom equipment wasn't yeah. working, I've not seen a bonds person on the weekends. But uh, I have oh, during okay. the week. Gosh, it's been so long since I've been over there. I don't know what they do with them anymore. Okay, so the, so the j deputies can help you out there. Yep, they'll help you out. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. You have a blessed day. Uh, you too. Okay. Right now. Bye. Bye. Hey, thank you, Judge. I'm, I I feel a little bit bad about. <laughs> I know he I he's he's a mess, and I don't you know I don't know. I mean, yeah. yeah. I I would worry about him more than anybody else. You're right. Good morning, sir. What's your name? Corey Pritchett. Thank you, Mr. Pritchett. Is there a detective there with you? Officer Bell. Thank you. Are you go you're doing the uh, square two? Yes, sir. Okay. This will be case 8223704735, State of Michigan versus Corey Lee Pritchett. Your name for the record, please. Corey Pritchett. And uh, officer? Uh, it's Officer Cale Bell. I'm with the Canton Police Department. Thank you. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you provide in this matter will be true? I do. And are you testifying from uh, personal knowledge or from an investigative okay, report? From an investigative report. Thank you. Feel free to proceed. Okay. So what we have is uh, Mr. Pritchett here is with us for a domestic violence charge. Um, we are stating that he should be issued a warrant for it's an assault of crime. This happened at Crossbow Circle. Uh, there was no weapons involved in this particular case. Uh, 
per the per the individual that the offense was against stated that she believed he was under the influence of alcohol. We're asking him to have no contact with the victim. Uh, I'm requesting a $6,500 bond at 10%. Uh, to, for the conditions for the release, no contact with the victim. I'd like him to turn over all firearms if owned, as well as no alcohol or intoxicants. Uh, I do not believe there's a danger to society, however, potentially a danger to the victim. And if you find it necessary, a tether, a GPS tether. Okay. Um, can you give me the factual basis for the charges? Uh, so on, one second here. It was on the third of this month. Mr. Pritchett was out at four one one seven three Crossbow Circle. He was inside the home when there was a dispute that had taken place. Um, allegations were made where Mr. Pritchett had punched Ms. Williams on the side of her head near her left ear. Uh, the, the argument then made its way to the living room where she recorded the incident um, in the video that was being recorded. Uh, he is seen spitting in the direction of the phone unknown if the, if the spit had made contact with Ms. Williams. Uh, there were several different comments, arguments over whose house this is, what may be going on. Uh, Mr. Pritchett had left the residence um, in that particular incident. He left, he had called sometime later after his vehicle had became stuck in the snow. Uh, he was asking for some assistance. Our officers had made contact with him. Uh, vehicle down in the area of Van Bourne. Uh, later investigation showed that Mr. Pritchett had left a voicemail to Ms. Williams. It basically stated that um, he said, bitch, you ain't going to feel, you are going to feel every inch of this nine. Uh, not necessarily sure what he may be referring to in that particular incident. Uh, we've had several other reports with Mr. Pritchett, as well as Ms. Williams, for similar instances where charges were uh, declined or not sought. Okay. And there seems to be some indication that a television was damaged. Uh, yeah, there was some property damage reported at that particular. It looked like a TV uh, under $150 of damage. Okay. All right, I do find probable cause to sign the warrant and Ms. White as to the arraignment. Rita White on behalf of Mr. Corey Lee Pritchett. I did. I have spoken with Mr. Pritchett and have advised him of his rights and the nature of this hearing. He will wait formal reading, stand mute. Thank you, court will enter not guilty. Plea on your client's behalf as to bond. Uh, Mr. Pritchett is 34 years old. He represents, he has no prior criminal convictions, no KPS history. He is currently attending Henry Ford Community College, majoring in business management. He resides with his mother, and he currently is on disability. Uh, Your Honor, yes, he is charged with this matter. However, he is aware of the um, order that will be put in place for him to have no contact with the complainant, which he will abide by at all costs. Given the fact that he has no KPS history, he has no um, prior criminal conviction history, and is very, very aware of the conditions of his bond that will be put in place. I am respectfully requesting you allow him to be released on a personal bond, and if this court um, feels um, so inclined to proceed with this matter, personal bond with GPS tether. Thank you, counsel. One moment. <clears throat> mm hmm On disability. Just sponging off from uh, every source possible. <laughs> I didn't wear a turtleneck.
Thank you, Casey Cat. Thanks for telling me, Andrea. Council, um, all right, you done cogitating there at this location where these allegations arose. Is that correct? Correct. He lives all the way in Romulus, he's not going to be in all the way in Romulus. Reports concern about the uh, assaultive nature of these allegations. Apparently punched the uh, complainant in the head at least twice, um, and this was not only assaultive to her, but apparently her children were present at the time. <clears throat> That's not good. He spits on her, he's testing her out, all of this in front of her children. So here's what we'll do. Sir, while this case is pending, you are not to use alcohol for any reason. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Additionally, you are not to possess a firearm or any other dangerous weapon. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. No contact with Ms. Williams. That means don't go to her house, don't call her, don't text her, don't reach out to her on social media, don't have anyone do any of that on your behalf. Is that clear? Yes, sir. You are not to go to her house at any time for any reason. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Is your client working, counsel? No, he is not. He is on disability. Okay. But actually, he does also, he does have a temporary job that he has been working at in which he works as a shipper for a company named Ryder. So it's kind of a part-time temporary job he's working. Oh, happy birthday, Nisi Lynn. What's the nature of that work? Um, he he's, works in the warehouse where he ships. Uh, products and items. Okay. Is there a regular schedule he has with that job? Or? Uh, Mr. Pritchett, is there a regular schedule? Uh, yes, I work uh, four hours a day, uh, Monday to Friday. Okay. I'm going to put you on GPS tether. You can go to work only on that tether. Other than that, you need to be at home. Is that clear? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, does that mean uh, I will be able to um, go up there and get it, or do I have to sit here because I, I do have to report to work tomorrow? Yeah, unfortunately, you'll have to uh, wait on the uh, Wayne County Tether Department to uh, to fit you with a tether. That may take a number of days. Um, Sir, I was wondering about that one myself. Yeah, I understand that, and you know, it's not my intention to have you or anyone else lose your employment. Um, but I do feel the tether is necessary to ensure the continued safety of Ms. Williams. Um, it's a very unfortunate consequence uh, that I don't have any control over. I, Your Honor, he also attends school, and I am requesting, given the fact that this is all about whether he has a history or you, we can, he can show through his history that he will not comply with the conditions, that you allow a turn-in date in the fact that he would like to maintain his job. Plus, I'm asking you allow the tether to allow him to also um, participate in the school classes at Henry Ford Community College. Is school in person or? Um, yes, sir. Oh. All right, so I'll put work in school only. Uh, again, unfortunately, I can't control the, the tether unit uh, and their delays um you know i don't know what the answer to that is whether they need to buy more tethers or we need to stop using so many tethers but they do have a backlog and it does take a few days to get fitted um 
All right, and the court will set bond at $5,000, 10%. Is that uh, council affordable or unaffordable? Oh, I'm sorry, this is out of county. Yeah, but uh, either okay. way, can you post $500, Mr. Pritchett? Uh, as of right now, no, ma'am. Um, they took my car. I had to. I have to. Uh, they impounded my car. I had to. I have to get my car out eventually. I had bills as well. Okay, so Your Honor, we're asking you reconsider, given the fact that he's going to be placed on tether, primarily house arrest, but for work and only he can leave uh, his home. We're asking. We're requesting respectfully allow him to be released on a personal bond with the GPS tether. This is his first contact conviction, I mean, of this nature in terms of he has no prior convictions. Okay. Well, they did charge it as misdemeanors. Um, all right, Coral said bond at. She's excellent. 5,000 personal with all of the above uh, conditions. Next court date is going to be March 17 for pretrial in 35th District Court in Canton. Anything else for this record? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Canton. Have a great day. Thank you. Yep. Well, there you have it. That's what I had for Sunday court. That's what I had. We, we we found some gems in there for Sunday court. That that, that was all today. So you, you know, it's hard to find any material. But we but we had. Uh, I th I think the I think the most interesting one is when they called the wrong guy, or a guy who got charged who who doesn't know what what they're talking about, and it seems as though that is the case because he, for instance, the mother's name is wrong and and all that kind of stuff. So. That was that was pretty interesting. Thank you all for coming out. I, I'm uh, I'm impressed for a Sunday morning chill stream. It was nice to see you all and I'll see you all soon.